Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for sitting here with me for the next half an hour as we go through the next old, new old thing in marketing. What we're going to talk about is a brief history of podcasting, podcasting, podcast listener facts. God, I can't see fit. Female and male listener demographics, how to create a podcast, how to market your podcast, and where podcasts fit in your marketing plans. So, what I'd like to ask, by a show of hands, how many people actually listen to podcasts? And if you have a specific podcast that you listen to, which one is it? The Amazing Seller. And that's by whom? Uh, Scott Volker. Okay. That's selling on Amazon. How frequently do you listen to it? Um, I would say at least once a week. Okay. Anyone else? I saw another hand. Uh, I like to I'm good. Go ahead. I listen to it. My favorite right now is Prison Letters with Mark Goldstein. Okay. He's and how? He's a psychiatrist, and like, he wrote a book that a lot of people read in prison, and so they send him letters. Wow. And then he like kind of does a psychologist, psychiatrist session on, on the letter. Sometimes. How often do you listen to it? To the, yeah, uh, I listen to podcasts almost every day. Okay. Yeah. So we have a daily user, we have a once a week user. Sir, gentleman in the oh, back. Yeah, I listen to them all the time. I like uh, one, one I like is stuff you should know, which is um, the, I think the parent company is the, the folks who publish the way things work, mm -hmm. which is, was a book that I had uh, when I was a kid. But stuff you know, it's fascinating about the subjects uh, that as far ranging and disparate as you can just imagine, and a couple of guys who have a great. Uh, rapport with one another, and I listen to it. I would say that kind of podcast I listen to probably weekly. Okay, so we have two weeklies and one daily. Well, if you don't know much about podcasts, I'm going to give you a very brief history. The reason that I titled this old is because podcasts were originally introduced in 2004. They were created or they were credited to be created by two gentlemen. And that was Adam Curry and Dave Weiner. Like most other ideas, they languished for about a year, and then in 2005, the first podcasting guide was created, and it was released in 2005. It was called, titled Later This Week in Tech, and the uh, author was Leo Laparte. So podcasting was, sorry about that, podcasting was a thing, for, oh, now I'm having a, technical difficulties. Okay, podcasting was a thing, and it's been a thing for at least 14 years. If I can do math, I'm a lawyer, so I can't do math. Well, um, 13 years. So now why is there a resurgence, and why is everybody talking about podcasting? It's replacing what we call the next new thing, and it is the new social media, so to speak, and it has a place in your content marketing plan. So I'm going to give you a quote by Taki Moore, who was the hundred million dollar coach. And what he says is, before we even start, before even starting your podcast, come up with a unique premise that would appeal to a specific audience. Well, we're going to get to that when we get to the content section. Podcast facts. If you look here, you'll notice that there is a chart behind me. And it begins in 2006 when they actually started tracking podcasts. And it goes into 2018. And what you notice is that the growth is exponential. And why is that? It's that way because mobile has such a great influence on the way we do everything that we now want to make sure that we have our content on demand and we can take it with us and we can travel with it. So we've determined that 64% of Americans know what podcasts are. 124 million Americans listen to podcasts. And we're just talking about here in the United States. We're not even looking at global numbers. So we have the dominant age range for monthly, monthly listeners is 25 to 54. Women have their listening capacity has increased by 14% in 2017. And 23% of American listeners listen to podcasts in your car. So what that tells you is that mobile is the dominant way that people are consuming content. And podcast is the new way to make your content be heard. As a marketer, I'm always interested in what your demographic looks like, who you are, your sex, your age, how much money you have. And one of the things that we learned about podcasters is that male and female use is almost equal. We know that 48% of American women listen as opposed to 52% of American men. 
basically equal. 24% of the women listen to at least one podcast and 27% of men listen to. So you have an equal range. You don't have to worry about differentiating between a male listener and a female listener. 32% of that audience is between aged 25 to 54 and they listen to podcasts monthly. 35% earn $100,000 or more. Why is that important? Because you know that your listener will be able to buy the goods and services and has more disposable income. So you want to make sure that that content is available to them. And we know that 60% of them have earned college degrees, which means that that particular listener has the ability to process quickly, has logical reasoning, so you won't have to work as hard as if you're explaining something from scratch. So next we're going to proceed to the steps that create, how to create your own podcast. And basically there are four things that you're absolutely going to need. You're going to need a blog RSS feed, you're going to need recording software, you're going to need your microphone, and you're going to need your content. Of the four items that are listed there, content is probably the most difficult because you have no idea what you want to talk about, what appeals to your audience, and how you're going to present that information. So the RSS feed, which is rich site summary, is the way that content is delivered from the internet. So we know that your podcast can only be delivered on a podcast-only feed. It has to be determined by the enclosure tags, and I'm going to try to speed through this technical stuff because that's not really why I'm here. Um, it's hosted on podcast apps and podcast directories, and there are three ways to create the feed. You can use PowerPress feed, you can use category feed, and you can use Yahoo Pipes. The next component that you're going to need is your recording software. I've listed these software in order of their cost. The first two, Audacity, which is good for Mac, PC, and Linux. Then you have GarageBand, which is an Apple product comes installed on, any, on every Apple product, including my iPad. Then you have Adobe Edition, which is a better format because it will also convert your files to an MP3 format which can be uploaded and that's the format you're going to need your podcast to be in in order for it to be listened to. Then we have Logic Pro X and Hindenburg and those are generally software that you're going to use after you've done your introductory phase. So I personally like Adobe Audition although there is a learning curve. I'm not a Mac user when it comes to my, my laptop. I'm more of a words woman, Windows woman, so I use Adobe Audition, but any of the other two, I have opened and used GarageBand on my iPad. It's fine. It works. It's just I don't want to take that separate, the next step to convert my file, so I just stick with an Adobe Audition. There is a curve, though, and it took me a while because I'm not normally one who records, but I'm getting there. I'm getting better, so just expect and know that you won't be able to do this immediately and don't get frustrated. So the next piece of equipment you're going to need is the microphone. And I brought you one that I use and is the one that's in the photo. I do not get any revenue from this microphone. I just want to let you know that it is a mic that I like and it is a USB mic. Um, it's important because you want to make sure that the sound that you deliver it's the best quality that you can deliver. It makes a difference because people will not be able to see you. You're relying on one tool and one tool only, and that's your voice. The more you spend for your microphone and the better the quality of your podcast from the gate, the better it will be for you to attract your audience and you'll be able to get more listeners, sponsors, other things. So I'm going to give you suggestions. You can see what my preference is, and only because I didn't want to go too far on the lower end, but I, didn't, I wasn't ready to spend the three and $400 for a professional microphone. So for an entry level, some of the best suggestions are the Logitech ClearChat headset or the Samsung, S-A-M-S-O-N-Q2U. 
For the mid-level, which is the Blue Yeti, which is what I have, they do have a snowball. I didn't like it. It's just a little round white ball and you can't, uh, it doesn't have much adjustment ability, but it's a great mic, it works. It, if you want to use it as your introductory mic, it's fine. But I like the Yeti, and then there's another mid-level, because I don't want to be biased, and that's the Shure SM58. And then you can go to professional level microphones if you want to spend the money and you don't want to spend the money twice. I would suggest go ahead and get a professional mic. You're at the top of your range. You're going to probably deliver the best sound that you can. So try to get a professional mic. And two recommendations for those are the Rode Podcaster or the Heil, H-E-I-L-P-R-4-E. -E. And there's one other thing that you might want to know and that there are two different types of mic. The professional mics are probably going to be XLR mics. This one is a USB. I actually have a USB cord here that I use with my computer, so that's fine. But with the XLRs, you're going to need a, a, an audio source. So get ready to know that in addition to paying more for the mic, you're going to need extra equipment. So now we come to the big part, and that's content. And one of the things that I've discovered in this podcasting process is that you don't have a clue what you're going to talk about, and you don't really know how to determine what you're going to talk about. For me, it's going to be marketing because that's the thing that I'm the most passionate about and that I can speak clearly and talk about it relatively knowledgeably. Depends on what day you ask me, though. But it's a big it's one of the things that you should consider carefully before you even start. And one of the things that I found it during this process is I wanted to do this quickly. And I wanted to say, okay, I want to get my product out. It still hasn't been released. I'm not releasing it until the end of September. One, because I want to make sure that I deliver the best quality product that I can because once I initiate and I launch, I don't want people to be turned away because you know what our attention spans are like. I don't want you to be turned away because you're disappointed with my content because I'm probably not going to get another chance. But I thought about it, and one of the things that seemed to be recurring were these five questions, and the, basically they were, why did you choose to podcast? I choose to podcast because it is a supplement to my content marketing plan. I've been a content marketer since about 2014. And it seems like the rest of the marketing world is catching up and we have so many outlets available to us. So the more content that you have available and the more value that you offer to your listeners and to your target market, the more likely they'll hear you because there is so much competition. Like just about four years ago, if you were using social, very few businesses were actually using social properly. Well, now you're competing because Facebook has changed the format and they're now encouraging us to buy ads and they're cutting down how much goes into your feed. And they changed that algorithm in January. They're more than likely going to change it again this coming January because they found a new revenue stream. So you're competing. It also helps with your SEO because the more inbound links, the more outbound links you have going, the better improvement it is when you come up for search rankings. So additional content online is great. The next thing is, what would be helpful and or entertaining? So, first of all, before you can answer that question, you have to know who your audience is. What's your subject? Who is your audience? What are their interests? And I recommend that you attempt to do a little bit of research. If you pick a topic, look at the demographics. All of that information is there. Find out what they like. Find the points that stick with them. And start with those podcasts. In addition, that first podcast should be just one that talks about your podcast, what you're going to deliver, and where they can find you, because that's the introduction of Wesley Appetite. The third question is, what's your passion? Right now, mine is marketing. It's what I do, it's what, the company that I own here in the Lehigh Valley, but it may not be your passion. It's got to be something that lends itself to authenticity because people are not seeing you. You see me here and you can see I'm passionate. But if you hear me on a mic or you hear me on a podcast, you may not be able to hear that because I may not be passionate about what I'm talking about. It has to come off and it has to be authentic. 
what's relevant, what's relevant to your audience, not so much to you. And one of the speakers earlier talked about the Venn diagram, and he talked about your interest being on the left-hand circle and their interest in the right-hand circle. You're less concerned about the intersection. You're more concerned about what's happening over here in that right-hand circle. The last thing is, do you have the skill to talk about the topic that you pick? Just because you're passionate about it doesn't mean you have the skill to talk about it. And it's a question that you have to ask yourself and you have to be honest with yourself because you don't want to come off sounding like some ranting lunatic who really likes what they like, but you're not good and knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about that topic. So those are five questions that I asked myself and I said, hey, what, what topic am I going to podcast about? Of course, it turned out to be marketing, but that's just me and I'm stubborn. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to market your podcast. The most important thing, and in my research, and it just stands to reason that the most important thing that you should consider is the quality of your podcast. And I can't say enough how important it is that when you launch that first podcast, that you make sure that it is the best quality you can deliver with the best equipment you can deliver. We have the attention spans of 3.5 seconds. And if you're not going to get me in that 3.5 seconds and have me go on a journey with you, I'm on to the next. And there are plenty of nexts and it won't be you. Make sure you pick a good hosting platform that platform can help deliver your content and take a lot of the work off of you. It's going to be difficult to launch your pod podcast, and it's going to be difficult to get an audience. You're probably going to ask your friends and family and everyone else you know to listen to your podcast and subscribe so that you can boost your numbers. But a good hosting platform can help with that. Publish your, plat your podcast everywhere. Social media, your website, your friend's website, your cousin's website. Post it everywhere you can because you are competing with a whole lot of content and you need to make sure that you are accessible. Pink, listed on pink, LinkedIn, I'm sorry, LinkedIn. Keyword your podcast listings just like you do any other content that's important that you want to reach a lar large audience. Even tying your keywords in with other content so that when they see that original content, the podcast will follow along with it and you'll be able to reach a, an audience and increase the numbers. Feature the podcast on your websites, and I cover that one, but it's important. If people are visiting your website and they don't have a link to your podcast, you're missing an opportunity. And we know better than that. We're WordPress people. We know. Make sure everything is there. Get your family and friends to listen to the podcast. And you can even write a press relief. Yes, print is dead, but there, if your particular audience does have an audience and there is a place where you can write, write a press release, re release, write a press release for every topic that is relevant. There are still people who read. My 81-year-old mother reads. She might not listen to podcasts, but her friends might. And there are some other people, and they talk to people, and everybody they talk to is not 81. But the important part here is to make sure that your podcast is reachable by everyone, and you've exhausted every outlet marketing it that you can. So the podcast is another component of your content marketing plan, and it also helps with your SEO. One of the reasons that it is a great piece of content is because the mobile revolution has taken over. Everybody in here has a smartphone, and that is generally the way that your audience is going to hear your, and listen to and download your podcast. So make sure that that's a component that is available in your content marketing plan. It also is a captive audience. They want to hear from you. They want to hear what you have to say. They are choosing to download your content. You don't have to work for this audience. So make sure you give them quality and make sure it's one of the components they can find in your marketing plan. It allows you to tell your business story. 
No one knows your business story except for you. And one of the best ways to convey that information is orally. They may not be able to see you, but sound works just as well as one of the best, the other important senses. It also encourages engagement with your other content and with your website. It is a driver. It will drive people to articles. It will create a an interest in you, your company, your good, your service. People who listen to your podcast will more than likely also read some of your other content. And it has also been determined that people who listen to podcasts are 24% more likely to, buy, to purchase the goods and services that they hear about in the podcast. So that's 24% more revenue that you're going to earn. Right now, it is still an affordable medium because people have not been crowding in like they're doing with social media. Facebook, some of the other media are making you pay for their ads because they realized finally, I don't know what took them so long, but this is a different revenue stream. They're going, hey, we're letting these people use this for free. Let's make them pay. Podcasting is still one of the less crowded medium and it's also one of the least expensive right now. So I'm going to leave you with Miranda Katz's um, quotation. And basically she says, people are really listening and want to consume all of the content that is there and available. There's a level of dedication that comes from podcast listeners that you otherwise don't find. This is your audience. Give them a quality product. They want to hear from you. And now the numbers prove it. Podcasts aren't a bubble. They're a boom, and that boom is only getting louder. And don't forget, September 30th is, is International Podcasting Day, so please make sure you do something to celebrate it. We do a monthly seminar in Easton in October, so now I'm a marketer. This is where my shameless plug comes in right here. Yes, this is where my marketing comes in. But we do a seminar, a monthly seminar in September, October, November in Easton and Allentown. To register, you can email us. And this is how to follow us on social media. So thank you very much. Now I'd like to know if anyone has any questions. Yes. Uh, do you have a uh, preference for uh, his hosting? And Libsyn is the one that folks go to because it's the one people know, but do you have a preference? I don't have one right now, but I know that most of the hosting sites now provide you with a lot of the back end analytics. So you want to use a hosting site that does give you the analytics that doesn't make you work for it and that you don't have to go through Google and go through all of the drama. They will help you with the podcasting because one of the things is it's like calculating the ROI on social used to be. You couldn't calculate it because it was so weird. Well, podcasting now is in that place, and a lot of the services will provide that for you. you. Mm-hmm. Yes? When, you know, as you went through this whole thing and described putting, you know, deciding to do a podcast and all the rest, mm -hmm. it sounded really like, gee, I'm starting a new company. This is a business plan. For me? Well, no. The whole process here seems like it, it's, it's more, very similar. It's more of a component that you're adding to what you're already doing. Because if you're a person that doesn't really spend a lot of time on social, you don't really have time to flick through your phone, and you'd rather have content that you can download and take with you and listen whenever you want to, podcasting, that's one of the reasons that it's growing so quickly, because people are downloading and taking it, and they don't have to do it when you want them to do it. Yes? Do you have any recommendations on That is a great question, and actually there are seven different types of podcasts. You can cast on your own, you can interview, you can rotate the content. What's the best way to determine that is what works best for you and what your audience demands. Because for me, I know that I'm introducing, I'm going to eventually introduce interviews because I don't want to be the talking head all the time. I want to do it just because as an initiation and to familiarize you with it. But I want other marketing experts to come on and I want them to share their expertise. I don't know everything, other people do. And if I share, I also reach a larger audience. So there's a little bit of a selfish motive there. 
the frequency, one of the things that I've been learning is that you should have at least three to four podcasts prepared before you even launch. You shouldn't just put that first one out there. Make sure you have at least a month's worth, whatever that frequency is going to be. I say what I've determined is that I'm going to do like a weekly one and see if I can keep up with that pace. I may have to drop it back to once a month because I have a million other things to do. So it really is based upon how consistent can you be what does your, and what does your audience want. Yes. Follow up with Kim's question. What, what about the length of the podcast itself? Have you seen different, I've seen different things that they're like 20 or 30 minutes and I've seen 60 minutes. I haven't tested that theory yet because Again, my podcasts have not launched. I'm one of those people that will tweak something to death, and I'm like tweaking, tweaking. But I am gauging it on how comfortable I feel talking, and at what point does it sound like I am droning on, and that people are going to stop listening to me? Where's the saturation point? When are they going to stop? And I'm going to try for 15 minutes. That's going to be my first one because it's going to be short. It's just going to introduce my podcast me, what my company does, blah, 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 blah. And that'll be a 15 minute one. And then if we get some buzz, I'll try some more content. But it'll also depend on the content. How much will I have to put into it to convey what I want? Mm -hmm. So you haven't seen anything that says, oh, if it's five minutes, it's too short. Because it seems like people are gonna listen to these in the car mostly, right? You know where's the best place to find out? Look, go on the iPad, iPod directory. Okay and look at the length and look at what the average is and look at the most popular ones because that's the kind of research that I would do. Mm -hmm. I would look at the most popular podcast, see what the length is, and yeah. then gauge from there. I was gonna say, I was just at the podcast movement conference in Philly a couple weeks ago. Wow. So I'm all podcast up, this is a good talk. <laughs> <laughs> that came, I think, uh, it seemed like shorter podcasts is like a growth opportunity. Really? Where there's more like daily five minute podcasts mm -hmm. Sports, you think of like sports center type mm. things. Because so like when I listen to a podcast, I do it a in lot the car. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't want to fool with the, the right. Podcast. It's because like right. people at home and like and Alexa and stuff like that. They so it's like while they're doing otherwise. dishes or making uh -huh. breakfast, people are listening to like five minute podcasts. So mm. traditionally even longer, but supposedly like I don't know. This is what the people <laughs> on stage they were saying that they're huh. they're building more short. But it does make sense. So our attention, our yeah. attention spans are yeah. very short too. Yeah. We don't want to listen. I'm sorry, you had your hand raised back there, didn't you? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So if I'm following your marketing and the whole podcast and what you could use it for, mm -hmm. so say for example, he wants to do a YouTube channel with merchandising, mm -hmm. right? And looking at your demographics, I'm just kind of playing this out in my head. Mm -hmm. That say you want to reach out to the parents and the grandparents who have the money, who have the the means to go buy the things you're merchandising. Mm -hmm. Maybe you would integrate like a podcast in, a, advertisement into like a YouTube video that would, you know, maybe hook a, a parent or a grandparent. Is that the kind of it, interplay it you're talking about? It has to deliver some real value or the people are not going to listen to it. So if you are, and for lack of a better word, if you're hawking something on YouTube, you don't then want to make a, a podcast that's selling also? No, say for example, say, okay, so I know I'm a clueless parent mm -hmm. when it comes to the stuff he's doing. Oh. So maybe you put the hook in for the other demographic. I okay. Mean, parents and grandparents aren't going to sit and listen to the, you know, the YouTube creepers, mm -hmm. you know, 20 minutes worth of YouTube. But if there's a hook in there that you could somehow get out to the other demographic that would actually buy. It sounds like a good idea. So you're talking about using the podcast for the purchasing segment and the, the YouTube video for the products. Right, segment. to like, you know, Minecraft Untangled. Minecraft the Dummies. Oh, right? okay, and Minecraft, the that would be for, me. For the people <laughs> who would buy the stuff, right. for the people who are into the stuff, like is that the kind of dynamic that you're talking about on kind of cross-marketing platforms? You could probably platforms? use it, you could probably use it, I would, I don't know if I would use it that way because I never even thought about it, honestly, but it, it probably would work. It depends on what you're podcasting about and will it hold their attention. Like, as an adult purchasing, what's going to attract you to their Minecraft? Like, right, like, right, for example, explain, say, the first lesson could be, if they don't, if they don't know what, a, what the mobs are in the game, you could yeah, explain 
what the <laughs> definition of each thing is. Okay. For the first, well, for the second podcast, after you introduce your podcast. Well, that sounds like a fantastic... He knows better than I do. Yeah. I mean, but that, that's the passion that I'm talking about. That's the passion. Talk about the things that are passionate to you. Are there any other questions? Yes. I sell physical products. I sell eyeglasses online. Mm -hmm. So can I do a podcast on that? Is that, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. I imagine people would get bored of that and then just, you know. You can have listening. ophthalmologists come on. You can have optometrists come on. You can talk about eye diseases. Style. Yeah. You can, you can Eyeglass so styles. Yes. You can have visitors come on. Yeah, there are so many ways that you can use it, and it doesn't have to be you talking about eyeglasses, companion pieces, eye injuries, anything that you can talk about that is a companion to an eyeglass. Mm -hmm. Kroger's UV, UV treatment. I want to listen to your podcast now. So we're going to get a list together, right? Yeah. Are there any other questions? Yes. Um, I see a lot of like podcasts that have like a video. Also, mm -hmm. is that just a total other thing, or is it like something to consider? Most of the po real podcast people say that it's a separate medium. Uh -huh. To me, I, it makes sense because you're having just the sound. That's what appeals to one audience. But if you have the video, too, which is for a younger generation, they're going to like the sound and the video. Even if they turn the sound down, they still got the video. I like the, the video podcasting. But the enthusiasts are like, no. The experts are like, well, you can't do that. I don't know. I like the idea. There's a guy online. I'm, I'm going to get to you in one second. I see you. RLD, his name is Robert L. Dumas. He also sells this, his platform is selling podcasters paradise. Like, but he's been doing this from day one. And he's like, no, well, you can't do video with podcasts. So Robert says no, I say yes. <laughs> yes. Could you offer the same content as audio? And then let's say that you shot your video right there of the two of you. You know, doing your thing, mm -hmm. and then you just took out the audio component and did that for your audio podcast and saved the video as a as a different offering. It's the same content, but it has video components. And I like repurposing content. I think the first, the second time around is just as good as the first time. You're getting another group of people. I think. The boundaries are not as clear. The boundaries are very clear right now. And most enthusiasts in one camp don't like to mix with the other ones. But I think the eventual, where it's going to end up eventually is that there are going to be mixing of the platforms. And that you're going to see more of that. And be an innovator. Just because someone says you can't do it doesn't mean that you, you shouldn't. Innovate. Everybody's innovating. Any other questions?